Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Rubber Stamp Tapestry, and for today's project we're going to use multiple sets, um, just as I did in the previous video that I did for them. So the stamp sets that we're, or excuse me, the peg sets that we're going to use are Greetings from Kansas, Itty Bitty Pumpkin Patch, Autumn Elegance, and then their pack of sentiments called Happy Sentiments. And they're really nice, big, and bold. So as always, the peg stamps, they have a registry down the side so that you know how the stamp will stamp when you put it to your paper so that you can turn it. So I've grabbed a couple pieces of cardstock and I've cut these to be two and a half by six inches. I do enjoy making the odd shaped card. I'm not sure why, it's very odd. So I'm going to be using the Happy Thanksgiving stamp. Um, we're going to make some, <clears throat> excuse me, Thanksgiving cards, of course. Now, these could also be um, place cards. These could be note cards. Um, you don't have to use a sentiment. So again, there's, there's many different ways that you can make this size card. The card size that we're making is actually going to end up being six and a half by three. So you would cut it six and a half by six inches and you'll score it on the three inch mark. So I'm gonna be using my Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp my sentiment down. On the one, I'm gonna stamp it off to the right and the other, I will put it in the middle. I'm gonna use two different um, embossing powders, that was the word I was looking for. Um, I'm going to use my Recollections Copper for the one, and I'm going to use the Recollections Gold um, for the other. Now, the Recollections, that is a brand that's by Michaels Arts and Crafts, so if you do have a Michaels that's close to you, um, it, that's their embossing powder. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies, they're awesome. Yay. Um, that is their brand of an embossing powder, and I like it. Um, I think it works very well. So I've stamped and heat set my two sentiments, and then for a change, we're gonna change it up here a little bit, I pulled out some of my Stampin' Up! inks. Haven't done that in a while. So needed to show them just a little bit of love. So the colors that I've pulled out are pumpkin pie, Delightful Dijon, Crushed Curry, Calypso Coral, Merry Merlot, which is one of the new ones, awesome, Fresh Fig, Old Olive, and Mossy Meadow. Now, Old Olive and Mossy Meadow are very close, so I kind of do a second generation. So I am just going to go to town, and I'm going to stamp my images. Um, with peg stamps, it is easier to start with your largest images first and then stamp down to your smaller images. So you would, you know, go from largest to smallest. This way you're filling in the areas or the open spaces with the smaller stamps. So, of course, this stamp set is the Greetings from Kansas. So these can be um, sunflowers. They can be mums, whichever one you want to do, any flower that you would want, um, but they're just nice and, and big. So now I'm going to come in with the greens, and then I'll be stamping those throughout too. Now on this one, I do make a boo-boo. That's -boo. okay, we cover it. That's the beauty of all of us. I do not, I get this question a lot, I do not cut around my peg stamps. Um, I just keep them the way that they are. I just try to make sure that I go straight down um, onto my cardstock and you can see what happens when you don't. Yeah. Um, especially with that one. It's it, because of the way the stamp is cut, you, you can get a bigger chance of ghosting. Um, and also with the Stampin' Up! pads because they are so soft. Um, 
you know, you don't need much pressure to put your stamp down in there to get some ink onto the stamp. And I'm a little firm. I'll say it, harsh. I'm a, I'm a heavy stamper. Um, I mean, I'll go right down into it. And that's how we cover that up. See? You just put a stamp over it. Hee <laughs> hee! There's always a way. Now I'm going to come in with the smaller flower stamp with my Versamark ink. And I'm just going to stamp around because then I'm going to use my, <clears throat> excuse me, embossing powder again. Just to give it more accents going around the card. Um, just to give it some highlights and some shimmer. So I will heat set that. And then that panel is pretty much set. For the next one, we're just going to focus on pumpkins, of course. I'm going to grab my stamps and my colors. And because I chose the two different sets, I have a greater range of pumpkins. So, and that's what I was looking for, just the differences with the pumpkins so that they can go along at the bottom. Again, starting out with the largest one, just stamping that across three times. And then setting up my other inks to do the other clusters that are going to come across these pumpkins. So even though I didn't turn that first pumpkin, um, the clusters that sit around that pumpkin will be different. I am sticking to oranges um, and golds and yellows for my pumpkins. I almost went into the Merlot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would have been pretty, I think. The one that I do dip into is the Fresh Fed. <laughs> I had to put a little purple one there. So now I'm going to pull in all of the curly cues, uh, the greenery that comes off of the pumpkins, and just going to set those around. Also having the greenery coming in along the bottom um, to fill in those white spaces. Now you could make a pile of pumpkins um, and it would definitely be absolutely adorable, but just by putting these greens down below and turning ever so slightly going across, um, you do get these differences and it just, it just completes um, the image that you are stamping. It kind of like closes it up, so to speak. Again, I'm going to come in with my Versamark ink and I'll be heat setting that with the gold. Again, just to get some um, shimmer um, and some accents for the card. Once they are heat set, we'll clean up the area because I spread out. Of course, we knew the vintage photo was coming in. Not that it doesn't come in on almost every video, but especially, <clears throat> especially in the fall. The vintage photo is, is even more prominent. So the mats are cut two and three quarters by six and one quarter. I'll be using my art glitter glue to set them down in place. And again, it just gives it a little bit of a frame um, to help the colors that I used when I stamped help them to stand out just a little bit more. So I did choose an olive green for the gold and I chose a dark brown for, we'll say, the copper. Again, here are our card bases. Again, they are cut six and a half by six, and you would score at three inches on the six inch side. I'm going to use my double-sided foam tape just to prop these up. And then we will set them on our card base. Now our card base is ivory and the color, the 
um, solid paper that I've used is also by Stampin' Up. So this is Old Olive, um, Early Espresso, and then their uh, Very Vanilla cardstock. Sitting here thinking, and here's what I'm thinking. Should I add an embellishment? Should I not? So I decided to bring in my one of my Nouveau Jewels drops called Orange Marmalade just to give a little bit of brightness to because of some of the colors that I used. I tap it gently just to even them out. And those were our projects for today. So I do hope you enjoyed them. Um, I hope I've given you some ideas if you have your own peg stamp sets, um, how you can use them and the different ways that you can incorporate them into what you already have in your stash. All the products I used as normal will be listed down below in the video description. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone is having a great day and thank you so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch my video. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe and make sure you ring the bell because you don't want to miss the next video. Again, enjoy your day, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative.